everybody it's rain and in today's little sit and spin video we are going to be spinning this braid right here it is 100% rambouillet wool and my son actually picked the colors for this and helped me to dye it so we're gonna be spinning this up so as you can see this braid has three colors he picked a nice light gray a turquoise blue and kind of a semi solid dark purple so the way that I split this to be spun was I split it directly down the middle lengthwise so I had two two lengths of fiber that were both gray blue and purple then I took one of those lengths of fiber and I flipped it over end by end so we are going to apply the gray with the purple, the blue with the blue, and then the purple with the gray on the other end. So it's going to be both marled on the ends and solid in the middle. And I have a few projects in mind that might suit it pretty nicely. So in the video right here, this is about the only good close-up shot I got of how the fiber spins. Now if you guys would like, I can do a Let's Spin This series on pure Rambouillet if you would like. But let's talk a little bit about the fiber characteristics of the Rambouillet sheep. They are just like Merino, but usually have a longer staple and a little bit less sheen. The micron range is from 18.5 to 24.5, so a very, very fine wool breed, just like Merino. In fact, this fiber here is 21.5 microns. 21.5 microns is a really common range to get merino fiber in as well. It is also known as the French merino, and it is the largest of the fine wool breeds. Very highly valued. They mainly come in white. I've never seen it personally in any different color they may have, and the fleeces can weigh anywhere from eight up to 18 pounds. Goodness, could y'all imagine an 18 pound fleece? So here is the results of our spinning. I have one purple end with gray in the center and then the other one has the purple in the center and the gray on the outside. So we're going to use the Ashford wheel oil to oil our Ashford e-spinner three up. I apply a little bit right here where the bobbin sits on the flyer and then the tip of the flyer right where the little pegs hold your flyer in always move your little tension band up and out of the way then pop your flyer in and make sure it pops all the way down into the little pegs and then i'm going to thread my leader through and then we will switch our wheel to the s twist because i spun my singles in the z twist turn my machine on so I have my tension band set around my bobbins so that when I go to plying, it doesn't just kind of fly off and get pigtails everywhere and just make a mess of itself. It keeps a little bit of tension on those bobbins and it will keep it nice and neat and at a nice tension and an even rate coming off the bobbins while we are plying it. Now here I did thread my singles through the little yarn guide in the front, but sometimes I don't. If it is a thicker yarn or has more of a art yarn feel, I wouldn't do it. I would just uh, pull it straight off the bobbin. Open my little leader up and this is just a piece of Red Heart acrylic yarn that I took the plies and split in half and tied a little knot on the edge. I always put my plies a little bit to the side of the knot, a little to the side, that way it doesn't get all tangled up in the edges of that knot. And now we are ready to spin. I slide my finger through the two singles to get the beginning of the ply going. I always like to have a finger or two between the singles. That's just the way I like to ply. Some people do it different. That's just the way I do it. Completely personal preference. And then just nice and gently, I start out nice and slow so I can make any adjustments as I go. And another little tip to keep your spinning nice and consistent is to move your yarn guide over pretty much as soon as you get the leader wrapped on your bobbin. And I like to do this if I'm plying or if I'm spinning the singles, just to get it off of the top of that leader yarn. You can see when I'm pulling my singles off of the Lazy Kate, it is pulling the Lazy Kate with it. And of course you could put down like the shelf liner to keep that from happening, but I don't like to put that much tension on my Lazy Kate especially when I'm plying a quite thin fiber it can break your singles and that's just a mess I really do love spinning thin 
but I'm hoping to challenge myself a little bit, especially in this year's upcoming Tour de Fleece. So please, please let me know in the comments if you have ever heard of the Tour de Fleece. The Tour de Fleece is an event that runs concurrently with the Tour de France, and it is pretty much just a little event that we do where we have our spinning wheels spinning the same time they are spinning their bicycle wheels in the Tour de France. And some people join teams and like go for prizes and stuff like that. I think most of us, like myself included, we just spin a little each day and commit ourselves to spinning along with the Tour de France, which is the Tour de Fleece. So, the Tour de Fleece starts on July 1st, and I believe it runs through July 24th, and that is of 2022, of course, this year. And if you've ever watched the Tour de France, they have challenge days like uh, the mountains, like the climb days, and those are the days you're supposed to challenge yourself, you know. And then, you know, they have the rest days, and those days you can either take off or some people go ahead and spin on those rest days as well. So it's all in good fun, and it's something for us spinners to look forward to each year. And even if you don't really participate, you can always have a lot of fun scrolling through and seeing what each fiber artist is doing for each day of the Tour de Fleet. So I would love for you guys to comment down below and let me know what you guys are going to do. If you're going to do anything interesting or cool for your Tour de Fleece this year. And let me know if you have any suggestions on something you might want to see from me. And one more thing, I was thinking about doing like a Vlogmas style on this year's Tour de Fleece. Let me know if that's something you guys uh, might be interested in. Like a really short video that's pretty much raw, unedited, each day of the Tour de Fleece. Just to let you guys know what I'm doing. And of course, I will be uploading my regular weekly uploads here at the weekend as well. So please comment down below and give me some suggestions, you guys. I'm open to all suggestions and I really, really appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, about this Rambouillet wool, I forgot to mention that it is a lot more bouncy and squishy than Merino wool. I don't know what it is about the Rambouillet, but at least in all the fleeces that I have encountered myself, the yarn and the fiber both are more bouncy and squishier than Merino. So I want you to keep this information in mind as we go into the last few clips I have and we look at our final skein of yarn once it's complete. So I laid a piece of paper down to hopefully let you guys be able to see it a little bit better. And here is when we first started getting into our solid blue in the middle. And of course I had to show a little bit of how that was spinning. It all was really fun to spin, really easy, drafted very easily. Now I normally let it sit on the bobbin for about 24 hours to 48 hours, but this time I only let it sit for about 12 hours. So here is our finished skein of yarn. And I thought the marl and the solids go pretty well together. And let me know what you guys would make with this skein of yarn in particular. I myself am leaning towards something around the neck, maybe a shawlette or a little scarf, something pretty cool. But I definitely will have a pattern and let you guys know what we do with it in the future. Leave me some suggestions down below, please. I love reading your suggestions. Y'all come up with some of the most creative things that I couldn't even imagine. Now this particular skein of yarn has not had the twist set in it yet. So I was really impressed on how this fiber turned out. It is really, really soft, really bouncy and squishy. And speaking of bouncy, I did want to let you know where I didn't let it sit on the bobbin and where it was pretty thin and plied with a lot of energy, it does have a lot of extra twist in it. So for all of you that have watched this far, uh, next week we are going to be doing a video on how to get all of this extra twist out of this skein. It's very simple, very easy, and you don't have to put weights on it or anything like that to set the twist in this yarn. And I'm going to show you how to do it in next week's video. So please stay tuned, hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell if you haven't already. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And let me know if you're practicing for the Tour de Fleece and if you're going to be participating in it at all even if it's just like me just by yourself so i love you guys thank you all so so much for watching and i will see you next week have a wonderful day bye bye